tonight. Quiet times resume worldwide. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 3rd. Well, the only tropical thing active tonight is Tropical Depression Georgia, and this may not last for much longer. Elsewhere, we have the remnants of Frank, Songda, and 1S still traceable in the wide world of tropics tonight on August the 3rd. Uh, despite the recent burst in activity, we still remain at 39 storms so far this year. The Atlantic once again remains quiet and is not expected to reawaken for quite some time just yet. Uh, clearly, it was to have a midday nap, so let it rest for the time being. Meanwhile, the Eastern Pacific remains alive and kicking but may not be alive for much longer due to the weakening systems present here, being the remnants of Frank and Tropical Depression Georgette, the latter of which is expected to lose depression status not too far from now. Other than that depressing note, two areas of interest persist here as marked by the National Hurricane Centre. The first being the one close to Georgette having a 20% chance of formation, the second with a 60% chance of formation. The Western Pacific sees Sonda right at the top of your screen, currently over land and currently no significant importance anymore. 96W is now a thing in the South China Sea, headed straight for China. Uh, we've slapped a 20% chance on this system for me. Clo following closely behind is another area of interest with a 40% chance that is expected to head westward across the Philippines. Once again, it's business as usual in the North Indian Ocean as nothing is expected to form in this part of the world as is the norm for this time of year. However, in the South West Indian Ocean, 1S is weakening and is soon expected to dissipate, thus ending an extraordinarily rare out of season storm. Nothing else is active here and this basin should go back to sleep in short order. Viewing the satellite imagery for the Atlantic, once again completely devoid of any tropical activity with not even an area of interest to speak of. However, in the Eastern Pacific, Frank is dying but still looks quite photogenic on the satellite imagery on your screen right about now. Georgette hanging on for dear life for tropicality. Both systems expected to die off in the coming days or possibly even the coming hours. You never know. Songda in the Western Pacific is a barely noticeable over North Korea right now, currently a, as a remnant low, with 96W heading straight into China, nothing else active in this part of the world right about now that's worth noting on the satellite imagery might I add. No tropical activity in the North Indian Ocean as is the norm for this time of year with just the usual monsoonal patterns currently on going. Meanwhile, in the Southwest Indian Ocean, 1S is not up to an awful lot down here as it is dying off. And well, to be honest, I can't even locate it on the, on the satellite imagery here. So I've tried my best to place the graphic as best as I can. Other than that, nothing else is happening in this part of the world. So here's a closer look at Tropical Depression Georgette, currently located at 14.7 degrees north and 130.3 degrees west. Georgette currently has a wind speed of 35 miles an hour and a central pressure of 1,006 millibars. This system is expected to weaken out in the open East Pacific whilst traveling northeast before curving westward, losing tropical status as it does so and weakening to a remnant low in two and a half days from now. Now here are the multimodal diagnostics starting off with Frank. Once again, Frank's on a terminal weakening trend with no recovery expected at all. One of the reasons why is that shear is really ramping upwards for this system, as well as sea surface temperatures remaining so low that they are just complete, they're not even registering on the chart basically. 
And finally, mid-level relative humidity is also dropping to unfavorable levels. And I'm not sure what that track is trying to imply there. I'm, I doubt the system will make it that far. Um, once again, we think it's already lost tropical status down to the low, so I'm not sure why the track is that far out of it. Hey ho, the models will do what the models will do. Anyways, moving on, Georgette still has a li little bit of life left, but not for much longer as it is expected to lose tropical status soon. Uh, one reason being shear for this system is fluctuating, sea surface temperatures are dropping and mid-level relative humidity is also fluctuating but is expected to drop to incredibly unfavorable levels in the coming days from now. Just bear in mind these multi model diagnostics are about a day or so out of date. These are the latest I could find but unfortunately so these will have to do. Songda still remains disappointing as ever with the models not doing much more with this system uh, with the shear being way too high to do an awful lot of anything really. Sea surface temperatures remain too low if any at all due to land interaction and mid-level relative humidity also remains too low to do anything significant with this system. The models also don't do much with the remains of 1S as shear remains way too high and continuing to remain just off the charts really at least in a few days from now. Sea surface temperatures remain just under the 26 degree threshold needed. Mid-level relative humidity also remains way too low to help this system just at all. Don't forget you can go to our merch store where you can buy things such as individual animations, mugs and pillows. Also worth mentioning is our line of still waiting on Hone shirts marking over a thousand days of waiting for a single name from a certain part of the world. The West Pacific remains piping hot with 29 degree waters, however pockets of 30 degree waters are all over the place. The Bay of Bengal remains roughly around 30 degrees, the Arabian Sea largely 27 with temperatures off the coast of Somalia significantly cooler. The tropical Atlantic remains nice and toasty with waters reaching around 27 to 28 in the main development region. The Gulf of Mexico, however, remaining with 29 to 30 degree temperatures. The tropical Eastern and Central Pacific remaining largely 27 with some pockets of 28 degrees here and there. Moving on to the sea surface temperature anomalies, the eastern and central Pacific are a mess of below and above average. The western Pacific still remains warmer than average. The Atlantic pretty much above but below in a line extending from the Caribbean all the way out to Portugal. The Bay of Bengal above average and continuing to warm. The Arabian Sea slowly getting above average however. Uh, off the coast of Somalia remains a significantly below average as represented by the purple color on your screen. Oceanic heat content in the Atlantic continues to improve with the most notable area being the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico also housing some significant energy and once again in third place goes to the main development region with some energy present however all areas of the Atlantic still gaining energy just waiting for that next system to fall. Now, as we mentioned previously there are no AOIs in this part of the world so oceanic heat content will continue to grow at least for quite some time. The Western Pacific remains full of energy with a lot of red towards the east of the Philippines. Meanwhile, the Eastern and Central Pacific gaining small amounts of energy, but once again, like I keep saying, it's no contest at all in regard to what part of the Pacific has the most energy. There's just way too much of a difference. On this day in 2006, the main feature was Typhoon Kapiroon, I hope I pronounced that correctly, apologies if I have not, which strengthened to Typhoon status in the South China Sea. Uh, pretty much uh, on this day today, shortly in 2006, shortly after crossing the Philippines. Elsewhere in the Atlantic was Tropical Storm Chris, just to the north of Hispaniola, and in the Eastern Pacific, both Fabio and Gilmer had weakened back to tropical depression status. So once again, that brings us to the next names in each respective basin's naming list. Up next in the Atlantic still remains Danielle, followed by Earl. Up next in the Eastern Pacific is Howard, followed by Yvette. And up next in the Central Pacific, you all know what I'm going to say, say it with me. The next name is Hone. 
So, after the disappointing start to list 5 in the West Pacific, up next is Mulan followed by Miari, I hope I've once again pronounced that correctly, once again apologies if I have not. Up next in the North Indian Ocean still remains Citrang followed by Mandus. Bringing things down under, the first name up in the Australian region still remains to be Darien after 1S failed to get names at all followed by Ellie. First up in the Southwest Indian Ocean remains Ashley followed by Belita. And up next in the South Pacific is Harley. That's all from me for now. We'll see you for another Tropic Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.